Should You Watch The Alien Movies. In this Should You Watch series, I plan to cover entire movie franchises and TV shows to answer the question, should you watch them before you die? This is the first time that I watched any of the Alien movies, and I decided to watch a director's cut of all six of these movies in 4K for the first time. And let me just say, older movies in 4K look better than newer movies in 4K because film isn't reliant on pixels of digital cameras that they use nowadays, and the film that was used when these movies were filmed could be rendered in 8K and some can even be rendered in 16K, so it's, it's older movies look better in 4K than a newer movie that was filmed digitally in 4K. When I watched the first movie, I then realized how many things were influenced by this movie, okay? I think the reason that Raiden from Metal Gear Solid 4's Synthetic Blood is White is because of the Alien movies. Half-Life 2's Head Crabs, well, I mean Half-Life's Head Crabs, but lots of stuff in Duke Nukem, the face cover, the humans covered in cocoons, just a lot of different movies himself as well, Aliens, and all this was just, it was very influential. So getting that out of the way, let's get into the first movie. So Alien 1 was released in 1979. At the time of recording, a prequel was released three years ago. So this is another long-running movie franchise. The first movie is a sci-fi horror movie about a crew going to investigate a crash site on a different planet, only to discover something more than they asked for. I just gotta say, right off the bat, the set and prop design for this movie is really unmatched by so many other movies that I've seen. It even holds up like really well in 4K, just the costume design for the alien and the, just the props, I mean it all looks really good. Just so much better than the garbage CGI that we get nowadays. And it had to be better for the actors because like this whole set, this elaborate set that looks so good and so realistic like a spaceship, it had to be better for the actors' performances for the movie because it's not just green screen like a modern movie. It's not just, oh, this is all fake behind me. I have to like imagine that I'm on a spaceship. I have to imagine all this other stuff happening. It's like, no, the set design was immaculate so that actors actually got to like be in the role more. So I definitely felt that when I watched it. And I did watch the, the first movie two times to form my full opinion on it. Because the first viewing, I was kind of a little more indifferent towards it. But the second time I watched it, I definitely I noticed more things about it and found more things to appreciate. But I would definitely say you got to be a little more in the mood for the first movie. But it is still, it's definitely worth it. Literally just like for the influence and the set design and props, it's worth a watch. Also, no spoilers, but there's a scene in this movie, and all I'm gonna say, people that have watched it will know what I'm saying. Such a flawed way to try to kill someone with a magazine. <coughs> it doesn't work like that, <laughs> but okay. On to Alien 2. Aliens is a huge, step up from one in every way possible. James Cameron is literally one of the best filmmakers and this is just more proof. I mean Terminator 1 and 2 and this and just wow. That's what I can say about that. This movie you see Ripley return only to discover she's been in cryo sleep for over 50 years and then she, then she decides to go to the planet that she was on before that things went bad on, okay? But guess what? Things don't go as intended. <laughs> There's also this bleeding heart crybaby guy that's like, oh, we should try to save the aliens, ah! Even though they're literally like only made for killing and like all that. And then he's just a huge cuck boy. So yeah, the second movie, really good. The progression of Ripley and just the final boss battle of the movie it's just a, makes it badass and a much wad, a must watch movie. So many video games were inspired by these movies. I don't know if I could say that enough. <sighs> Alien 3. 
Aliens 3 is a huge step down from 1 and 2. The problem with this is one of the problems from the Terminator movies after the first two movies. The movie just shits on the ending of the second movie. And it's just, I mean, Aliens was more left open to a sequel than Terminator 2. But just, it didn't need to be continued. That would have, 1 and 2 is a sufficient story. But then there's just, whatever. At least Ripley's back and she wasn't recast or written out of the movie in a stupid way. But this movie just is not well thought out. Things just seem to happen. Just because, oh, what the, why the fuck not? We need more of that aliens money. Yeah. And I mean, most of the actors in this movie look and sound the same. So that just made it more confusing. I'm like... I mean, they're in this prison, that's kind of the thing, like, they're in this prison, and Ripley ends up in this prison, and that's, like, the plot of the movie, and it's, like, it's a lot focused on these characters, and it's, like, there is the alien aspect, but it's just, I did not enjoy this movie. It was just, uh, I didn't enjoy it, it was, it's shit. And I mean, it just freaking defecated, freaking pounds on the freaking second movie. Just right off the bat, you're like, what the fuck? That's not how you continue this. <laughs> so it's just a huge step down. But even this movie, I think, still inspired that church guy from Far Cry 5. But 3 is definitely one you can skip. For sure you could skip this one. And after I watched 3, I ended up looking up the chronology of the series. Only to discover there were two prequels that took place before the first movie. So I wish that I had watched it in chronological order, but I decided to take a break before I watched Alien 4, and then I watched the prequels. So let's talk about those, all right? So Prometheus is the first movie in chronological order. Supposed to be. But I gotta say, this is just... Prometheus is a boring waste of time. The, the only thing related to fucking aliens, it seems like, is the, the brief the brief thing that's an origin of something similar to the Xenomorph, literally at the end of the fucking movie, is... And like I said, I watched the director's cut of all these movies, and this was nearly a three-hour fucking movie. And it's just, it took an hour for the movie to let alone start, for like anything to happen at all. It took an hour. This was just, it's, it's such a slow-paced, boring movie. And just the CGI is trash as well. When are these people that make movies going to realize that 9 out of 10 times practical effects look better than CGI unless thoughtful time is taken by the right people working on it to just make something great? It's like they rush this out and it's just like all these CGI scenes with the CGI aliens in the movie just hold no weight for me because it just looks... It just takes me directly out of it. You got like freaking stuff from a PS4 game interacting with like real world things. It just, it does not look good. It's a boring movie. So that's the first prequel. All right. Is that one worth watching? Fuck no. Skip that one as well. Covenant. All right. This is the second prequel. Okay. Two prequels. Okay. Not just one prequel. Here's another prequel. Oh, motherfucker. And this has two actors from Pineapple Express. So right off the bat, there was no taking this seriously for me. Another problem with the prequels is they have more futuristic stuff than the actual Alien movies. It's like when you take things out of the era that they're made in with like the, the futuristic 80s technology to just this, this AR like just technology that we like have today like big flat screen computer screens and stuff all in the ship it's just how are these supposed to be prequels it's just it's stupid i mean really also watching this slow ass prequels just reminded me of why i stopped watching movies for like six years i just i couldn't get connected to the characters or really just care about what's going on and it seems like the majority of the time the majority of these three-hour fucking prequel movies is like nothing is happening. It's just they're so boring. Alien Covenant, Attack of the CGI Dust. That's might as well what the freaking first two hours of this movie should have been called. I mean, really. If I knew how disconnected the prequels really were to the actual series, I wouldn't have even watched them. So do me a favor and skip these CGI boar fests. I mean... There's also this scene in the movie, there's like a freaking, 
there's these androids that exist in the alien universe, and it's it's like a bisexual freaking alien robot. I was just watching like these scenes where it was doing shit. I was like, what in the fuck? Like, there's too many characters in these in it too. It's like, what the hell is going on? There's too many characters that do nothing. It's just a clusterfuck. The prequels are a boring clusterfuck. <laughs> All right, on to the fourth movie, all right? Alien Resurrection, or Reconstruction, however the fuck you say it. This is not a prequel, and I'm pretty sure right off the bat watching this, right off the rip, I was like, this was meant to be a 3D movie. So back in the freaking late 90s when this movie came out, you were supposed to watch it in 3D. I can tell right off the bat because they had a bug CGI thing fly at the screen and like zoom up. So I was like, yep, this is, I'm supposed to have 3D goggles on right now. I'm supposed to be watching this in 3D. But on to the actual movie itself. So a lot of people hate this movie. I've heard. I haven't before I do these, I don't watch any other reviews, I don't do any of that until I've watched the movie myself, so nothing I say is diluted. So, this is a big, dumb action movie, like I thought the Alien movies were before I watched any of them. So, I'm glad to have ended on a high note with Alien 4. I know that um, there's a few CGI things in this movie, but I'm pretty sure most of it was practical effects. And I gotta say... That creature at the end, the new alien newborn thing, that's got to be one of the most fucked up things that I've fucking seen on screen. Like, it's not scary, it's just creepy looking. Like, something's wrong with... Like, I don't think that was CGI. If it was, that's some really impressive CGI. I think it was practical. I don't even know. I know there was some CGI part when, like, stuff was, like, flying out a window at one point, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you could have did something better than that. But I also don't take Alien 4 as a serious movie, either. Like, if you're taking this as seriously as they wanted you to take the, the ultra-serious, boring-ass prequels, and you're just you're not going to enjoy it. But I laughed out loud several times while watching Alien 4, so I can say that I enjoyed this more than the prequels. <laughs> and I, I also enjoyed this as much as number one, just in a different way. So, Stay Earth man. What a shithole. I know, right? So in closing, all six movies watched. I got to say the first I got to say the same thing as the Terminator. The first two movies in Alien and Aliens, they're the best in the series and that's just that's the story for me. I don't care. I'm not even going to say alternate universe and alternate timelines for the the, the sequels and shit. Maybe for four, I could say that. That could be like an alternate thing. But I wouldn't even watch the prequels. I wouldn't even watch the third movie. I would skip those entirely. And then maybe watch Aliens 4 Resurrection. Because, and don't take it seriously. Just watch it and know that, like, some dumb things are going to happen. And it's just, it's, it's a funny movie. I, I've laughed several times. You know, it didn't really take itself seriously. And also, when I watch these movies... I was just like, why the hell has one not taken place on Earth with just the alien, the xenomorphs going wild, going crazy? Why has that not been one of the movies yet? You would think instead of doing some boring, unnecessary prequels that raise more questions than they answer, they could have did one where these xenomorphs come to Earth and are just causing havoc, and there's like a war with the freaking colonial marines. That would have been a badass movie. That's a movie that I want to see. And yes, I'm aware that there's Alien vs. Predator movies, there's two of them, but guess what? That's going to be a should you watch in its own thing because I'm going to watch the Predator series and then I'm going to watch the Alien vs. Predator. I'm going to do a should you watch on the Predator and I'm going to do a should you watch on the, the Alien vs. Predator movies. So there's that, alright? So what movies in this series are worth a watch? Which one should you watch? Like I said, Alien, Aliens. Those are the must-watch movies of this. I'd say the only one, like, if you had one of these before you die to watch, watch Aliens, okay? It still, it gives you enough information about the first movie if you didn't watch it, but I do say the first movie sets up things and uh, just sets up the lore and some different things in the, the universe that just make the second movie even better. But... And before people say anything about my opinion of the prequels, of them being like three hours long, 
The director's cut of Aliens was nearly three hours long, and I thought that was amazing. Ranking them by number. Alien 1, an 8 out of 10. Aliens, a 9 out of 10. Alien 3, a 3 out of 10. Prometheus, a 2 out of 10. Covenant, a 2 out of 10. Alien 4, a 7 out of 10. This has been Should You Watch? 